Hello, welcome to the Mark Janard Show, the cybersecurity show. You need to switch to Linux right now. You need to switch to Linux right now. And I'm going to tell you about it in this video. So without further ado, let's get right into it. We're going dark. Number one, it's easier than you think. The Linux desktop is much easier than you think. 10 years ago, people wouldn't be able to make this claim, but developers and design designers most, uh, you know, of most distributions have gone out of their way to ensure the desktop operating system is as user-friendly as any OS on the market. During those early years of using Linux, the command line was an absolute necessity and the GUIs weren't always intuitive or stable. Now today, not so much. In fact, Linux has become so easy and user-friendly that you can go your entire career on the desktop and never touch the terminal window. Take me up on that. So that's right, Linux of today is all about the graphical user interface, the GUI, and the GUIs are not only well designed, but as easy to install, it's stable and user friendly as, again, any on the market. So if you can use Mac OS or Windows, you can use Linux. It doesn't matter how skilled you are with a computer, Linux is the best viable option. So I'd go so far to say that the fewer compu uh, computer skills you have, the better off you are with Linux. Why? because Linux is far less breakable than Windows, right? You really need to know what you're doing to break a Linux system. Number two, Linux is not just a kernel. One quick way to start an argument within the Linux community is to say Linux isn't just a kernel. Similarly, a quick way to confuse a new user is to tell them that Linux is the only, uh, it's only the kernel, right? So let me be clear with this, right? This is up to you. Every version of the Linux operating system uses the Linux kernel, but as a new user, you don't care about that, right? Even talking about the Linux kernel is a way to confuse and turn off new users. All operating systems have a kernel, but you don't have to hear Windows or Mac OS users talk about which kernel they use. In simplest terms, without the kernel, you know, you wouldn't have an operating system. So if anyone tries to confuse this issue, understand that Linux is both an operating system and a kernel and they bound inextricably bound. Three. Distributions are simply different brands of Linux. So when you first dive into the Linux waters, you'll find a vast array of brands you can use. There's Ubuntu, Linux Mint, Pop, Underscore OS, Fedora, Cutefish OS, Art Linux, Farron OS, Open, Sousa, SUSE, right? Magia, Bodhi Linux, Dippin, Sabayon Linux, Peppermint Linux, MX Linux, Endover OS, Manjaro, Gurada, Debian, Zorin, all that, all that stuff, right? The list goes on and on and on. So in fact, there are hundreds of Linux distributions, aka distros. So what's important to understand is that each distribution is like a brand. Think about Linux distributions as shoes. If you're looking for new running shoes, you might consider Brooks, Hoka, Nike, Alta, Sokani, New Balance, or Adidas. They're all running shoes, they just offer different variations of the theme, on the theme, right? Each shoe might have different features, different heel to toe drops, different weights, different purposes, and different looks. However, in the end, they are all running shoes. Please take a moment to hit that subscribe button right now. You, 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 hit that subscribe button right now. You, 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 hit that subscribe button. So, hmm. Linux distributions can be viewed in the same way. Each offers different features, different GUI tools, different purposes, and different looks, but they are all operating systems. The important thing is to find the distribution that fits and best matches your needs and wants. Number four, there are so many choices. Yeah, I like my singing. So one thing has always been true of Linux. There, there, you know, there are a vast number of choices, not only in distributions, but in desktops and installable software. To help narrow down your choice of distributions, first determine which desktop you prefer. There's Genome, Plasma, Cinnamon, Mate, Enlightenment, LXQT, Budgie, Pantheon, LXDE, Trinity Desktop, Sugar, and more and more and more and more and more, right? That level of choice trickles down to nearly every aspect of the operating system. You have multiple web browsers, email clients, office suites, and image editors. You name it and there is a choice. The good thing is that most of those choices are really good options. However, at first blush, all of those choices might be daunting. So the best approach for new users trying to decide uh, which path to take is number one, Decide which desktop you like. Number two, narrow down the distributions that use your desktop of choice. Number three, weed out the distributions that don't include a simple to use app store. Number four, weed out arch based distributions for new users only, for new users only. Number five, install and enjoy, right? You'll find, and, and here's, an, 
So here's the next one, right? Why you have to switch to Linux. So you'll find help everywhere, right? As with most anything these days, uh, it's just a Google search away, right? You'll find plenty of sites dedicating to helping people with Linux. When you run into a problem or something isn't quite as clear as you think it should be, just run a quick search and you will find tons of solutions. And while we're on the subject of finding help, keep this in mind. With Linux, there isn't always one right answer. You might find numerous solutions for just about every task you need to complete. The important thing is to find the solution that best suits your skills and your needs. The next one we have is not all hardware will work, but most will in regards to Linux. So, this is about, this is not only Linux, right? This is, you know, Ubuntu Linux probably has the best hardware detection and support for any operating system on the market, but that doesn't mean it works with everything. Certain peripherals you own could have trouble working with Linux. Two of the more problematic pieces of hardware are scanners and wireless chips. When I find a piece of hardware that isn't supported, here's one thing I off, you know, I've, I've often done. I try a different Linux distribution. For example, you might have a laptop and Ubuntu Linux can't detect the built-in wireless chipset. Consider giving Fedora Linux a try. It will work. Fedora often ships uh, with a newer kernel than Ubuntu Linux and therefore supports more modern hardware. So here's something that you're going to want to keep in mind. Most Linux distributions offered as live images, right? They're, they're offered as live images, which means you can test drive them without making any changes to your hard drive. This is a great way to tell if a distribution will support all the hardware you need to use. Now, the next one we have is you won't want for apps. You'll likely find all of the applications you need available for installation. You'll find plenty of web browsers, media players, office suites, image editors, email clients, and much more. It isn't like the early days of Linux when most of the applications were geared towards scientists, students, and developers. Today's Linux has games and all of the tools you're likely to ever need, okay? You, you, all the tools that you're likely to ever need. So that doesn't mean it has everything. For example, there is no version of Adobe Photoshop. There is a GIMP, G-I-M-P, which is just as powerful as Photoshop. But for those of you who, you know, are accustomed to Adobe's de facto standard, you out of luck. Ha <laughs> ha, you out of luck. You out of luck. You out of luck. The worst case scenario is you have to learn a new piece of software to meet your graphic needs. At the same time, you might have to turn to proprietary software. For open source purists, that's a no-go. But for those who just need to get things done, you'll find a mixture of open source and proprietary software uh, that will give you everything you need to be productive and entertain. Lastly is you'll have, you know, you'll use your password more often, right? Speaking of installations, uh, installing software on Windows, you can do so without having to type your user password on Linux. That doesn't fly and flag any time you try to do something that requires heightened permissions. You'll be prompted to type your user pseudo password. So this is part of the reason why Linux is so often considered more secure than Windows. And even though it might be an annoyance at first, you'll get used to it and eventually be thankful for the heightened security. That's what I have for you today. Please take a moment to hit that subscribe button and the like button. Please take a moment to hit that subscribe button and the like button right now. I appreciate your viewership. Stay safe. See you on the next video.